Hi folks, uh, my name's Paul Ansorge and I'm going to be hosting a panel at the Festival of Football Ideas. On the 7th of June we're doing a panel about football writing on the internet. Um, and uh, I'm also the co-host of a Manchester United related podcast called uh, the United Rantcast. And uh, because I'm a podcaster it occurred to me that perhaps we could do some audio recording for the Festival of Football Ideas website and uh, because it's an exploration of football's place in art and culture and all that I thought uh, it'd be a really good idea to talk to somebody who might know something about the history of football in uh, television drama in the UK and by the magic of nepotism I thought I'll ring my dad so uh, delighted that today we're joined by Peter Ansorge who uh, began his career in television at the BBC Pebble Mill Drama Department and then moved to Channel 4 where he eventually became the head of drama and was responsible for commissioning, among many other things, a series called The Manageress, which is uh, something that people in football apparently liked quite a lot. Uh, so I thought, well, let's get my dad on the phone and have a chat with him and record it and put it on the Festival of Football Ideas site so hi dad how you doing fine it's a pleasure to talk to you paul well i, I thought i could go and uh, well done on the result today <laughs> oh, yesterday <laughs> thank you um i thought i could go with uh, i could go with mr ansorge but let's just let's just remove all semblance of a fourth wall and uh, i'm just going to go with dad because it, otherwise it gets weird um so one of the things that i've been thinking about when preparing for this was just to sort of get a sense of the relationship between football and drama. We don't see a great deal of football and drama on our television anymore, but that wasn't always the case, was it? Well, uh, this really goes back to my, my, my first days as a script editor with the BBC and the drama department. At uh, that time, the controller of BBC One was a man called Brian Calgill, who was a rather fierce and alarming character who had been head of sport. And one day he assembled all the uh, script editors and producers of drama around a table just to s say what it is he was looking for on BBC One. And surprisingly, one of the things he referred to was rather a famous column by the ex-drama critic of the Sunday Times of this day, a man called Harold Hobson, uh, saying that, that no real drama had ever captured the excitement of the 1966 World Cup final in which England beat Germany. Um, and this was treated with rather a shocked response from many of the script editors, um, thinking, I suspect that how can you compare sport with plays? You know? However, from our end, coming from Pebble Mill, we, we thought this was rather a challenge because of what, of course, what Brian really meant was, where is the drama that will bring in that kind of an audience and react to those kind of themes and tensions and conflicts that you get in a great game of football. And there is an analogy between drama and football in that, in, in that way. Okay, so what, what is that analogy? Well, the analogy is, first of all, is to do with the nation, isn't it? The nation being involved in a conflict. Uh, the nation being involved in, 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 in individual characters and in a team just as though as in a great drama you get involved with different characters or the leading character and in a situation and inevitably in some big conflict as the drama co continues it is a football is a kind of metaphor in that sense which i think i've always thought of, of it as that so um we should say at this point that that you're not massively a football person, are you, Dad? No, absolutely. And um, that, that, that is one of the issues, I think, um, uh, that people who have tended to take that as a theme for drama have either been too kind of nerdily involved in the subject, that they want it to <laughs> be none, about, none, none taken. Fo about football and nothing else. And that's not what drama does. Drama, if you translate that to drama, it, 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 ha it is obviously about football, but it has also got to be about something else too. 
um, because there was the view at the time I'm describing that with that meeting of Brian Cowgill that uh, 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 the BBC researchers had told them that it tended to be the women that chose what the family watched every evening on television and uh, they would select the drama and in return they would allow the husbands and the sons grown-up sons to watch the football on Saturday night that's why you didn't have major drama scheduled on a Saturday night uh, at that time on television uh, and therefore the view was that sport was for men and drama was for women um, how did you set about starting to cross that divide and incorporate football into drama then well those were the days when you had something called a single play on television. Um, and the medium was far more open to new writers than I think it is today. So it's got a lot more complicated television than it was then. And so when you talk to writers at, at that era, they wanted to get onto television and they wanted to reach a popular audience. If they were theatre writers, they wanted to address a much bigger audience. So one of the attractions was to look at, at the time, working class pursuits. You know, what would engage the mass audience as a subject? Um, and people like Ken Loach uh, were the first to go into the pubs, the streets, the factories and find drama there, uh, as opposed to middle-class plays about people living in the home, home counties, you know, coming in the French windows and saying, anyone for tennis? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyone for football replaces exactly. anyone for tennis. Exactly. Um, so, the, the, one of the first things I, from your, on your CV that's football-related is a play called, is it called Match of the Day? Match of the day. We did a season called Second City First from Birmingham, but all network dramas, which were original work about the times we were living in. And Match of the Day was written by Neville Smith, a uh, Liverpudlian, uh, obviously, you know, but an Everton supporter, I have to say, as I recall. Um, uh, and what he did was to write about a guy who was reluctant to commit to relationships but was a huge football fan and was attending the wedding of his friend. But it was, um, it was a Saturday and what he, he, it was just bursting to get away from the wedding ceremonies to watch Match of the Day. So it was, if you like, a metal, Match of the Day. It was football, but it was also relationships and marriage. And Neville wrote a very, very, very clever and nuanced comedy, which the director Stephen Frears filmed. It's a half hour, and I, we saw it again not long ago, and it's an absolute delight. Um, it parodies a lot of the match of the day commentaries of the day. Uh, it talks about football, and it talks about marriage, and it links the two, and is actually an obsession with football and match of the day going to destroy your marriage eventually. And I think that is that's something that is still profoundly relevant, because people do give huge swathes of their lives over to football yes uh, and there's a balancing act required if you're going to do that right indeed and it got it got a far higher audience than you would expect from a slot for new drama on bbc2 as it then was and it was repeated quite often uh which in those days curiously enough was unusual <laughs> <laughs> um so do you remember anything about how it was responded to critically the critics didn't like it, by and large. Uh, you've got to be careful about this, because uh, if you do something that just works, you'll probably get one or two really good reviews. But the perception at the time of that kind of work, and as I say, uh, Match of the Day was only part of a whole uh, tradition, of t uh, what we now see as a tradition of television drama, challenging the audience with themes with which they could relate, but in ways that were quite unexpected and different and fresh often comic often serious that there was a whole mix there and yeah for a while it, it took the critics uh, some time to come to terms with this because uh you know after all wasn't football and these kind of subjects rather vulgar subject for drama <laughs> um so 
obviously that's you never thought of it as a vulgar subject and in spite of the fact that you're you've 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 accidentally had a son that's super into football but it's never been your passion but yet you're you were the commissioning editor responsible for the most football centric serious drama series ever on british television which was uh, a series that even sir alex ferguson liked uh, called the manageress so yeah. um how did that even come about in the first place well it when i became head of drama series at, at channel four well, you know stepping over a few years now this was in development uh, by my predecessor but it was it was the idea of a woman becoming the first manager first woman manager of a football team uh in the country which was an interesting idea tricky and the script that i inherited wasn't very good but one of the writers who i'd worked with at channel at the bbc on the series second city first we'd done his his first play a guy called stan hay again a liverpudlian knew a hell of a lot about football and in fact his first play had been about uh, called My Back Page. It was a famous play called My Front, The Front Page. This was The Back Page. And it literally just focused for half an hour on a group of bored football reporters watching a terrible game. And it was the interaction between them. But Stan, who later actually became a, a football writer for The Independent on Sunday... Uh, as a part-time, you know, excursion, knew a hell of a lot about football. And I just said, well, if you're going to do a series like this, uh, it's got to be written by somebody who knows about football. And Stan did. And what was so fascinating, I saw we, uh, the producer, I, I, I recommended him to the producers. The producers talked to him, said, yeah, he's great. They came, we came for a meeting. And then what Stan said was about, the, he wanted to make... Uh, the manageress, you know, because it's quite a leap, this. I don't think... Has there actually ever been a woman in charge of a football team in this country, Paul? Uh, uh, not in the professional game. There there have no. been... And, of course, like there are women in charge of women's football teams uh, yeah. and very successfully. And I, I still think it's going to happen at some point. Um, but it would be an enormous punt still. Well, he made he made his character half Italian grown up in England and was running a gym a kind of you know she uh, uh, but her father had brought her up with a love of football and particularly of the Italian game which as you know was regarded as slightly different or was different from the English game in that it tended to be more balletic more finesse more poetry as opposed to you know getting in there and kicking the hell out of the other side. <laughs> Shins. Do you see what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So he immediately conjured up a character who you could see, and this is just in the room, he hadn't written it yet, had some basis in reality, even though very fictional reality. And you could see, by bringing such a character up in contrast to the kind of English macho uh, game, was an interesting subject of drama so that really was the basis of it so what was it like to put the show together you know how how easily did it come together once you'd got to that stage well stan wrote um he, he did write a pilot episode very quickly and it was very good i don't think we did a lot of rewrites or anything the producers were very very keen to get the football side of it right and actually, it's quite complex to shoot uh, for drama um, sport convincingly. So we kind of said, well, look, we'll give 10 minutes or 15 minutes at the most each week to the actual football. But we'll make sure we shoot that properly, get all the angles right, make it look right. Because these were actors who had to train. They weren't first division team. They were second division team that then finally moved up the... Spoiler, well, spoiler warning. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but they had to sort of convince you that they could play football. That was that was that was what the producers um, absolutely planned. It was like you know, planning a war campaign, and and they did it, and and they pulled it off. Um, so that's how we did it. Uh, the rest would have to you know depend on whatever the drama situation each week was. 
So we planned it like a military campaign, this, this show. And just as we did it, um, curiously enough, um, uh, we changed chief executives at Channel 4. Uh, Jeremy Isaacs left to run the opera. And a man called Michael Grade came in who absolutely knew football. He began, he began as a sports correspondent. And when I told him this idea, um, it was in development, he said, Peter, this will never work. You can't do sport in drama. Because that was the view. <laughs> Fortunately, when he went to see the pilot, he changed his mind and became a huge supporter of it. And there were, there were um, advertisements all over the country about the manageress. And, and it became quite a thing. I mean, Sherry Lungi, who herself is half Italian, who played the manageress, did these coffee adverts. I don't know if you remember them. That became okay. quite, they were totally based on, uh, on her role in the manageress. When Michael Grade said you can't put sport in drama, why do you think that view exists? Because it was felt the women chose drama and the men, uh, and the men watched Match of the Day. And if you mix the two things, the men wouldn't believe in the football because the details wouldn't be right. And the women wouldn't watch it because they weren't interested in football. So there's a really obvious gender overlap by making it about a woman who's totally. running a football Yeah, team, that was the right? key to his success because cause I think the producers did get the, the detail right um, and Stan got the drama right. It got the biggest audience for a drama series that Channel Four had ever got, and it's interesting that that's there's a correlation here that the Match of the Day got a huge yes. audience for a single play on BBC Two. Manageress twenty years later or uh, fifteen years later gets a record-breaking audience on Channel Four. Um, from a sort of football nerd perspective, the Manageress is really interesting because ostensibly the culture clash is about a woman running. Uh, football team but really the drama that's a very small percentage of what the 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 dramatic tension between her role and the team is because actually the dramatic tension is about the influx of more complex and sophisticated football ideas versus this kind of 90 early 90s division 2 english football outfit um so she moves the midfield hard man back and plays him as a libero. Yeah. Um, she gets them doing stretches in the gym instead of doing these kind of really intense weight training. Uh, she she gets them to do their training without tackling because they keep injuring each other in training, proving how hard they are. And really, it's a profound reflection of what was to happen to the English game over the yeah, next ab- this is absolutely true, 20 years. And that's the interesting thing. This is down to Stan. It, it connected with something in Stan about his feeling that English football had got very nationalistic, very chauvinistic, very brutal in a way, partly because of your you know, your relationship with Manchester United. I've read up a bit about this, and it was exactly what Alex Ferguson faced when he began at Manchester United. And one of the reasons he did like uh, the manageress and used to show early episodes on the coach, because we had VHS in those days, VHS tape of it, was precisely because of that, was to say, cut down on the booze, don't kick each other, think about exercise, think about, you know, the kind of things that Gabriella in the manageress um, tells her boys to think about. And it had a pretty big impact on popular culture, as you say, um, the, those coffee adverts being the yeah. most obvious. Um, but it was around, wasn't it? It was something that people talked about for a long time. And, and it got a second series, which is not something that many of your, your Channel 4 drama series, they were, they were normally one and done, weren't they? Yeah, no, in those days, it, uh, hard as it to believe, my brief wasn't to do things that returned. I mean, it's almost unthinkable. Uh, now uh, uh, to come at television from that point of view because the whole point of drama series is to do something that will go f- to six, seven, ten, how many series? Channel 4's brief at that time uh, was to innovate and do something surprising and original uh, that the other channels maybe wouldn't, wouldn't have done. So yes, it, it, was, uh, it was unusual. And we could have gone on with it, of course, which today I presume they would do. (laughs) 
so what made you um what made you go for a second series of it rather than rather than just doing a, a one-off partly because you genuinely felt felt the audience there were the more stories to tell and that the audience wanted it and that it it it, it had to find a new kind of space for channel four in that i think in those days bbc one and itv uh if they didn't get 10 million for a drama series, can you believe that? Uh, they wouldn't have regarded it as a success. We didn't have to get 10, 10 million, but we didn't get 1 million, we got 4 or 5 million. And then when the advertisers looked at what they call the demographics, they suddenly realized that younger people were watching it, more educated people were watching it. It had a smart audience as well as a popular audience. So it it became, in an odd way, although that was certainly not the purpose, quite a commercial success for the channel as well. So obviously there was an impetus to repeat that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I was racking my brains about this and I can't think of a single serious drama about football that's been on television since. I think you have to, any, this is, even though I loved the idea, as you, you say, I personally don't know football that well. So you then have to take on board a writer that does. So all those details and those observations and, you know, cutting it to nerve. I mean, there was one episode about the black players in football, uh, which I was very proud of, because um, that was an issue that simply had not been raised. You know, when they threw banana skins at the at the black player that was playing for the team. Uh, and you could do all those sort of issues, but you need a writer that does give you the authentic background detail, however fictional and, you know, impossible the, the basic idea might appear to be. And that's been one of the problems. They've either been too nerdy <laughs> about it <laughs> now listen dad you're talking you're talking to the people that are downloading a podcast on the <laughs> festival of football ideas so there was a writer out there today who could write about football and what you take on board would be the whole international way uh, uh you know that that the, you know the fewer fewer english players playing in these in in, in the premier league uh and that's a huge wonderful dramatic subject and if there was a writer out there who could write it, it would be incredibly popular because it would have those elements. It would have the element uh, that the face of football has changed, that, that the people coming to watch games have changed. And if, 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 if a writer could come up with an idea for dramatising that properly, it would be a huge success. I mean, I think the, the one that got close to that was Nick Hornby and Fever Pitch, yes. uh, which is sort of tries to address some Absolutely. of those issues um and i think the like certainly in the book very successfully and the film's pretty good too bit um, arsenal bound i thought that's the thing i mean in the manager dress we took a team and it was a fictional team from the second division which contained all the worst elements of english for all of that time uh, nick's very very bound up to 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 arsenal in that in that much as i love the film uh i think the book more than the film I, I also think actually being bound to a club is part of the way that the identity of football has changed so yeah. much because you talked about football being a national pastime and it is, but the sort of public relationship with football has changed Absolutely. enormously so that club versus country is barely a debate Absolutely. for most people. Most people choose club every and, time. And that's, that's the whole situation today. So I, I would have thought for a dramatist it's all up for grabs. But there's a conversation that you and I have had many times about the quality of television drama in general and the sort of deterioration of it. And I think a really good analogy for that is the manageress versus footballers' wives, which was fine and like it was an effective melodrama, but it wasn't a serious examination of anything. Yeah. You know, it was a bit of yeah. fun, um, which is obviously like there's a huge place for that. Uh, but football has only really been used as a bit of fun. I, I, I have a theory as well about why there's no much less football in drama. And it's that there is simply so much football on television. So actually, if you care about football, you don't have to watch a drama series about it. Because yeah. 
almost every night of the week you can watch multiple I totally matches. agree with you about that Paul but if you look at some what um, say American uh, television drama is doing at the moment the, at the top end, the cable end where it's looking for national issues but confined to very specific places um, I'm obviously thinking of things like Mad Men The Wire but Friday Night Light uh, do you know that about the American team? I love that show I mean that does very very in a, in a, a very American way something very similar because although it's about the game it's about a lot of other issues as well and it encompasses that through the metaphor of of of, of the team and i think it's terrific it's a show about a high school football yes. team where the football is far too important yes. uh for, in that town yes. Like that, because the town's been through so, so much, the oil industry yes. has picked up and moved out of the town, and and high school football's all they've Absolutely. got. Absolutely. And and I think you could do something really interesting with that here, the the kind of over identification with football, which because I I am I definitely personally over identify with yeah. football, but but I'm also uh, a counselor and psychotherapist, so I think about <laughs> why that is, um, and. And it is a really interesting thing, and I think that the truth of the matter is that people externalise their emotional world into sport, and like in England that means club football more than anything else. Um, I think that's a field that would be extremely rich for dramatic yeah, analysis. Yeah, there was a terrific stage play in the 1960s written by Peter Turson called Zigazaga. Uh, which just was set on the terraces and just showed you the crowd supporting the team. You know, lots of choruses, the anthems, it was fictional. But again, Peter Turston was somebody, he was from, he was a working class, from a background that understood that. And what it's about is that you can get a sense of community and identity uh, through following a team. A lot of people thought, oh, this is kind of metaphor for fascism and uh, in Nuremberg rallies. And, but that absolutely was not the case. It was about something genuine that people cared about, knew about, had knowledge about, and could come together. And this is what I'm saying. I think this is what Brian Calgill meant right at the beginning, why uh, the World Cup was such a great drama, the 1966 one, um, and that contained elements which great drama should have too. Uh, it was a time when we were all influenced by a German playwright of the 20th century called Bertolt Brecht, who was a communist, and created a, a new kind of thing called epic theatre. And he said, watching, you know, you shouldn't watch a play and just cry and laugh and identify with the characters. He said, I want an audience like at a boxing match to look at a play with the knowledge of the rules, the games, what people are like. So they use, curious enough, their brains as well as their hearts. So at the time, the analogy of epic theatre and sport were very close. So it was something uh, that was kind of current and alive at, time, at the time in theatre. So what do you think is the next great exploration of football in drama? Where do you think that's going to come from? Well, I think the writer needs to um, look at who knows about football and, of course, can write drama. <laughs> Those are unfortunately the two, the two professional qualifications for the job. Needs to tell us what's happening now. As I say, the, 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 the big change that's taken place is obviously the, the amount of football that people watch, talk about, identify with, but that the nature of those teams have changed fundamentally uh, from the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know, in that it's international. The managers are, the players are. And that in itself must contain great, great dramatic stories and ideas. I think there's another problem with putting those on stage is just how disconnected football feels from reality. 
So if you're going to write a that you know the manager s one of the players in the manager s takes a two hundred pound a month a week bribe <laughs> from a journalist. <laughs> so, yeah. Pathetic like, these days, yes. Yeah, I mean even in the in the championship, yeah. um, which is the equivalent yeah. league, uh, that wouldn't make a difference to to the players lives so i think if you're going to do top flight football that it really is problematic to make serious drama about people who are going back to these yeah well of course there was um you know there was on itv not so long ago footballers wives yeah and the only way they could deal with it wasn't actually through the footballers but through their wives (laughs) and the crazy lifestyles they were able to lead so in that that's a good point paul do you think there are still interesting, resonant, real, proper human stories to be told in drama about contemporary football? Yeah, I, I think there are great potential I, dramatic ideas for any writer dealing with subjects that matter in, in the country today. And I, it's not easy. It's up to the writer to find the, the way of doing it. Uh, but you can't rule it out just because you think, oh, it's too complex or too difficult. It, it's not actually what we're seeing in television drama in the, in the global sense. You know, and I'm, you know, I've mentioned some of those American shows, the Scandinavian shows, uh, a show like Borgen uh, um, that comes from Scandinavia and is about a coalition government. Come on. But they make it great <laughs> drama. And uh, why, why aren't we doing that now? Fantastic. Well, hopefully someone listening to this will be inspired to uh, go and write the, the next great British television drama about uh, football or indeed the next great international drama about football because isn't that the point, really, that it's kind of a global... Yeah, absolutely. Global language. Absolutely. Well, Dad, thank you very much for joining us. Um, and uh, you got anything you'd like to plug before you go? No, that's fine, Paul. You know, as I say, um, you've got to listen to my son's podcast if you really want to know about <laughs> football. Um, other than that, it's a, been a pleasure revisiting that territory. <laughs>